this is a coast around Cape Roth in the Scottish Highlands, the northern tip of the British Isles. And it's one of the most wild and remote parts of the UK. And fishing out here is one of the deadliest jobs on earth. I'm leaving the shelter of the coast now, heading for open ocean to show you how to survive if you're thrown overboard in these freezing waters. And all I've got with me is a knife, a water bottle, a flint, blood, this life raft. Bukan kemana, bicang peginya. motion of the raft is enough to test even the hardiest survivor. Seasickness sets in when your senses send conflicting messages to the brain. Oh, I'm not feeling at all. Give me suspense. Give me suspense. <laughs> this mismatch can cause the ear to send signals to a part of the brain known as a vomiting center. When it does this, it induces sickness and ultimately vomiting. A little bit. Oh, you butcher. Yeah, I'm getting quite close. The rasp got me ashore, but I want to keep it if I can. The crashing waves and sharp rocks make short work of it. It's soon punctured and unusable. But materials like rubber are precious resources to the survivor. It's worth taking a risk to try and retrieve it. It's not much, but anything you can salvage could have its use. We've been all the way around this now. It's definitely an island. That is the mainland. With little food and no fresh water here, getting to the mainland is the best survival strategy. But with a life raft wrecked beyond repair, you're going to have to swim. In these freezing waters, you'd need all the insulation you can get. Look, you see that? It's up from the rock ledge. Yeah, it looks like the remains of a seal carcass. Yeah, look, you see where it's being injured? Back here. It's got bite marks as well. Probably a mating season, had a battle. Battle that it lost. The smell the meat on this is gone. But what these guys do have uh, is an amazing ability to survive in really cold water. And that's because of its skin and a thick layer of blubber underneath. Might well be able to make some sort of wetsuit out of that. It's going to help me on this swim across there. OK, let's try it. Swim without any protection in these waters, and you'd reach exhaustion and eventually unconsciousness in around an hour. And then you see the whole thick layer full of fat and blubber there. That's from trying to separate from the main carcass. Just to get my hand right in there. OK, and look, you see you're left with that head hole, place to put my arms. The Vikings in this area of Scotland use seal hide to make rope, clothing, even sleeping bags to protect against the cold winters. It's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but that is the ultimate seal skin wetsuit. Get after the moment, Tree, see when I can get this thing on. my cool body here and that's the bit I want to keep warm. 
Hypothermia sets in when your core temperature drops below a critical level. Muscle function becomes impaired. And even worse, your ability to make clear decisions. It's imperative you do everything you can to maintain core temperature, to stay warm. Weird, because the cold part of me is asking my arm, my chest and tummy. It feels nicely insulated. I can tell that already. Go on, swim! Tide. I'm gonna make this. The large swell and jagged rocks look daunting, but use the uplift of the swell to your advantage. Good job. Seal skin is tough stuff. Getting it off needs just a little care. Well, that did its job. What do you know? Let's go! Well, look, that's where we need to get to. Down into the valley down there. Should be able to just scree run down this. OK, follow me down. just that big it's going to kill you, let alone that size. It's a small lake, and that's really a chance to find some food. Come, let's go down to this. Look, you see, there's a natural choke point between these two lakes. You can create a funnel between them that the fish will use. Using natural formations in the landscape saves energy and time. Positioning these boulders across the choke point will force the fish through a narrow entrance. All I have to do then is place the net I found on the shore across the gap. Nice big opening here, so the fish can swim in. The net's in place, now to drive the fish towards it. All I'm doing is trying to create there's a mayhem and splash. So the fish don't enjoy it. I want to get away from it and swim that way towards the trap. And really, this is just a very simple old poaching technique. Catching fish efficiently. Fish efficiently. No pun intended. In my polymon, Kujimar is Hadumurunawa. Well, that's one. Let's keep him moving. 자, 지금부터 확인 들어가겠습니다. No. 이게 무슨 개맛이야? <웃음> 내 가운을 살려줘라, 좀. Look, there's one in here. Let's just get this bag up. Let's see that. There's another one at the back as well. Let's get this bag onto shore. One way. Okay, that's a result, two fish. And really, if you're hungry, a little trout like that, it's fine to eat raw, you know. Two fish. And then take the guts out. And then you can just munch into that. That's as fresh as you're ever going to get. Good energy. Oh, man, that's good. That was worth doing, eh? Huh. And use all this thistle that I collected 
is tinder. One of the few good things about this bog is all of this sphagnum moss that you get. It's going to be perfect just to cook this little trout. If I do that and just wrap it in this stuff, when it cooks, it's going to keep all of the good fats and the moisture in the fish and not burn it off. That white meat. Oh, much better cooked than raw as well. Oh man, that feels good. Warming, nutritious, and tasty. But not a big meal. Could do seconds and thirds of that. Thank you.